Hi everyone, time to install my M8000 uh, drivetrain. What I'm upgrading from is this X9 1x10 with an extended cassette. As you can see here, I have the absolute black 32 teeth oval ring, and in the back, I have the one up extended cassette, uh, the 42 teeth, and I'm using their uh, 16 tooth here. It's a short cage X9 type 2, so a clutch system. But one thing that I want to, pay, uh, to mention here, in case you guys have internally routed um, cables, like you can see mine here, what you want to do is, instead of just pulling the cable out, first push through onto the old cable, push one of these tubes. Uh, what I have here is, uh, uh, as you can see, is a heat shrink uh, tube. This is a 364, it's a bit tight, uh, but you can find it at any uh, electronics uh, component store. What I'm gonna use for a shifter is, of course, the M8000. You can see it here, SLM8000, made in Japan. And this is the iSpec2 attachment. And just like in the previous version, what you have here, you have this little hole, so the, just use a two millimeter Allen key to push in, and here we go, it opened up. Um, yeah, compared to the old one, this is a lot narrower, and um, what you see here, you have this um, plastic spacer, here it is. Just remove that one, the uh, new shifter pretty much replaces that spacer just like so. So it fits right in, which is pretty smart and very simple actually. Bring this close and voila. This is the assembly. What they've done this time, you can see a three millimeter Allen key. You can um, loosen that one up so then you can move your shifter relative to the brake lever. So this is maxed out in what I can do, the adjustment allows me to push my levers out that way. So that's all the adjustment that I am provided with right now. As I said, I cut the housing exactly the way, the same length as I had it before, because it worked perfectly. So I fed the cable through, and this is where my little tubing comes in handy. See, it's waiting for me right here. I just push it in, and it's, come, it's gonna come out right here this is an 1142 cassette and all you need on top of that is a torque wrench and a trusty cassette tool as you see here on the locking ring what they are recommending is a maximum of 40 newton meters which is pretty standard one thing you might want to uh, consider uh, just put a bit of grease on the threads right here earlier um, the attachment at the end of the b-link here make sure you grease that one up and uh, what I have here is a 5 mil. So it attaches to your Dorelli hanger. Again, this would be the perfect time to take a look at this. Make sure it's not bent or out of shape in any way, shape or form. I uh, thoroughly cleaned it up on both sides and I'm just gonna attach the Dorelli right now. Uh, usually try and keep it up here because uh, we do have a stop. So here it is, and then you push it down as far as it goes, and you tighten this one up nicely. This is your high adjustment, uh, the low adjustment is here. Make sure you align it with your 11th cock right here. With those two limiter screws adjusted, now you're ready to and install the chain. How come I don't replace my cranks? Well, here's what happened with the 11 speed. So all they've done here was they made the chain narrower because uh, they had to squeeze in one more gear. They did uh, reduce the width of the, of the chain by using thinner plates. So these plates are thinner. And what that means, it means that you can use exactly the same chain ring that you've used before because again, the, cha the chain is only narrower on the exterior dimensions. Actually, if you are to look at the race face, I have a my good old trusty 32. 
where they say that this is for 9, 10, 11 speed. So they, it is pretty much the same dimension internally. And in my case, I'm perfectly happy with my crank set, so I don't plan to change that in any way. A KMC chain. Um, one thing that I wanted to mention here, you can see it's specified right here, where they talk about the pin length being 5.5 millimeter. I believe the previous, the, the 10 speed one is 588. A couple of things that I want to mention here, because this is a full suspension bike. So uh, if you look at um, Shimano's documentation, they still say, well, measure big to big. If you have multiple chain rings up front, just use the biggest one. Then measure it tight and add two links, like one, two. However, this is a full suspension bike. I'm going to measure it tight and then I'm going to add one, two, three, four links to my chain. Feed this through, okay, and then you go over, and there is a little tab in between these two uh, pulleys. If your chain rubs onto the tab that's in between the two pulleys, you did not route it properly, okay? So you go through there, and at the bottom you go through here and I'm ready to install the missing link. One thing that's uh, worth mentioning here, uh, in case of an 11 speed chain, uh, as you can see here, missing link uh, instructions, it does say clearly this is non-reusable. And here it is, straight out of the box. So as you can see here, that's the profile of my rear derailleur on the 11 speed. Before attaching your cable, just look for this barrel adjuster and turn it in all the way. And then out to three, one full turn, just to have a bit of a adjustment uh, ability later on. Here in the rear, it's a pretty clearly uh, marked channel here where the cable goes through. Uh, just make sure you take all the slack. If you if you went too far by pulling on the cable, you will notice it by the fact that your derailleur will start to move in. So just don't do that. Just take off all the slack from here. All adjustments on this uh, derailleur are made with a two millimeter Allen key, and I know already that my uh, limiter screw here adjusted properly. The only other thing that I have to look for. One is my uh, low limiter, and the other thing is the uh, B screw adjustment. All right, that was good. Now, what I would do is just uh, go here, look at my uh, look at my guide pulley. It should be in line with my 11 sprocket right now. And I would turn it in until my derailleur starts moving in. And I know that is the limit of my screw. Perfect. The other thing to look for now, this is where you should be looking for the B screw adjustment. Uh, in my case here, I think it's, it's fine the way it is. Running an overall chain ring here. And if you look here at the bottom, you can see how much movement that oval uh, gives to the real derailleur. Last thing that I want to try is just to back pedal on while on the 42. Um, what happens is the 42 in this case, compared to the 10 speed, for example, is pushed in closer to the sp to uh, the spokes. So you can imagine the chain line; it's a bit more of an uh, extreme chain line in this case. So let me see how that looks like. So I'm fine here. Have the 32. The 32, I'm fine. 37. I'm not fine. Oh, I might be okay, 37, back pedaling. And 42, 42, it dropped before, and yep, 42 drops. 
The chain line right now is adjusted to be on third for the fifth cog, which is probably perfect. Uh, it's usually installed to be slightly biased towards the smaller cogs. So, how did this perform? You can see clutch engaged. I only had to do some uh, very minor barrel adjusted adjustment like uh, halfway through. Uh, yes, um, if you back pedal on the 42, it's gonna jump down to 30, 42, it jumps down to 32, I think. But I didn't really experience it on any climbs since I'm pedaling uphill. Um, handlebar, handlebar, what I did, the only thing that I did was to, uh, was to push, I pushed my uh, shifter up all the way, so using the slider, so for my long hands, I have a good reach here. Um, one thing that I like the most maybe is the fact that one, you can shift down two gears here. One, two, and they're nicely evenly spaced out. Um, I had that issue with the SRAM when I would shift down twice accidentally. Not happening with this. This, uh, the lever are a bit more positive compared to the previous uh, generation 785. It's not a SRAM though, so SRAM was even stronger that way. As for the cassette, uh, I love the spacing around the, uh, uh, here, 15, 17, 19. I, I'm, most of the time I'm in there and the spacing is great. It's shifting up and down. For me, the fact that I didn't have to think about gear shifting at all, it just shifted reliably all the time, that pretty much makes it. Um, I don't know if uh, Shimano uses this in their marketing, but um, if I am to use one word, I would say this is refined performance. So overall, I'm happy with it. Um, as usual, you guys uh, uh, figure out whether you need something like this or not. For me, it's here to stay. I'm happy for the upgrade. And uh, that's it, folks. Gotta catch my breath. I'll uh, see you next time.